if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. In this video, I'm going to do the complete how to hook up and use and tune and carb sync. Uh, an inline four cylinder it happens to be the CBR400RR. Many of you have been following along in the series of the, the carb rebuild and everything. And uh, finally getting to the point where uh, carbs are done, need to sync them, and we're going to go ahead, get the software all hooked up and uh, show you how to use this tool. So uh, real quick note, in the box, there's a couple accessories here. They're my own. We've got these golf keys and then these little white adapters. It does come with um, a few different adapters to thread into your cylinder head if you have that design. Sometimes it's just a matter of a, a nipple where you put the, the hose directly on and sometimes you need to put these and seal them up with uh, these O-rings. So you got to figure out what your uh, year making model uh, requires for this thread. Um, but this is a really common set for Japanese motorcycles. Um, to, to convenience my customer, and hopefully I'm the one that works on this in the future, I went ahead and put, when I had the carbs off, I put these long extension hoses um, on here, and they are secured onto the cylinder head where there were already threaded in ports where you would have just taken and put that hose directly on the head. Honda's, Honda's kind of famous for that, where they just have this vacuum cap on there. The one thing you'd want to do is, is make that a new vacuum cap altogether because they get hard and they can fall off. But I just went ahead, like I said, and made it made it new and extended these, which made it crazy fast to grab onto these and be able to check carb sink at any time in the future. And hence, that's what these little fellows are for right there. So if this uh, caught your attention and you'd like to know all about the uh, PropTech uh, desync tool, they call it, uh, stay tuned. Let's get at it. All right, let me show you my setup installed. So I've got the hoses routed nice and around. And I'm a big fan of throwing a zip tie and then pushing the cut end on the back side so you don't cut yourself. But once you do this, tug on this pretty hard and make sure it's not going to come off there because if you're ever pulling off from this end to separate like the tool from this side and that was easy to come off you could create a leak or a big problem and and that's what we don't want to do so we want to test our work and make sure that that's on there really good and then now how cool is that that we have those four extensions to make life much easier all right, let's go ahead and uh, get the carbs on. Give me a few minutes here to get, uh, we got brand new manifolds we're putting on so that we for sure have no intake leaks. That's another little tip for you. Make sure they're uh, good and pliable. These are hard as a brick. I think I could take chunks of concrete out of the ground if I threw them down. So got to know what you're working on. There's a lot more to carb sink than just hooking up a tool and turning a couple screws. You got to understand systems. If you don't, uh, make sure and subscribe, become a member of the channel. You can ask questions and we can get you in shape on everything you need to know. All right, let's get to work. One thing we need to do is finish hooking this up in our US available USB port. Let's go ahead and get that. As you can see, I attached the tool to the manifold extensions that we made. You need to make sure and pay attention to the tool as it's clearly labeled on which hose is for which cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and get uh, my portable fuel tank on right now. I'm still using this versus the bike's uh, fuel pump. Turn on my exhaust machine. And uh, let's uh, fire this up. I'll try it without choke. I had it running not too long ago. All right, let's go ahead and open the uh, software here. All right, I'm going to full screen that. If you're using this for the first time, uh, let's see here. You can go in here and there's a place to hook up your uh, company info. So this is good because it'll print it on anything as well. So how to wrench. I'll go in and fill this out later on, but um, accept this. Head over to our website and check it out, howtowrench.com. We'll have links to where to purchase this yourself as well. Um, so 
Let's get that done. But let's go back up in here and let's create a, oops. Let's get an owner in here. So let's do the CBR. I'll kind of make this quick to not give out too much personal information. Ah, if I could spell. And I'm not going to give you any of that. I'm going to get this though so I can reference it back. Make sure I'm at the right one. Model CBR 400. Or R. I'm going to designate that it's an N model. Well, I'm in here and that just 92, 93 were N years. That took some research. And then I'll just put a few of the last VIN in. Uh, the end of the VIN, you can do the whole thing if you wanted, but we are good to go. Okay, now that we're in the software, we get a couple things we can do. Once we start the bike, we want to go to operating temperature. That's just like any carb sink. And then one of the things we want to do is we want to take a snapshot before we mess with it. It's kind of cool to show your customer the before and afters. So this little snapshot uh, camera here will uh, grab a snap, grab a picture of it. You can get this out of the owner's manual. Show you it in action. You're going to go ahead here, and here's a before, and you're going to uh, take a picture with the camera icon, and then the little eye below it is actually a viewer where you can view it at any time, so you can uh, see that before and after, and then just make sure that you caught it too. So let's go ahead and uh, watch this happen. Uh, this bike definitely needs the carb sink. So I'm going to go up and there was it before. So I'm going to take a picture, I'm close that up, go ahead and look at it again. You can see it's an exact snapshot of that. Now the after hasn't been tuned yet. So now what we need to do is uh, tune the motorcycle and we take the photo. And then uh, the other thing we can do is like let's say we were only doing a, a two cylinder we could turn these other ones off so that they don't even try to pull up and that just knocks us down to the two we do happen to have a four cylinder here so uh we need all those on now the other thing we need to do is we need to identify which carburetor is the master and that's really easy to do in any carburetor if you just find the one that the idle screw pushes on that's going to be your master like you can see in this photo so i'm going to go ahead and set that now that's number two. And I'm going to leave this for chart now. If we switch this to uh, RPM, just gives us some data like that. Um, and then uh, we have more data that we can read down here, and we start to read these numbers and so on. We can change how wide this chart shows here by changing this uh, millisecond uh, feature. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there now. I don't know how it's gonna work, but let's go ahead and fire up the motorcycle. It's ready to go. You can hit the start button to start the recording. So I can't stress enough how important it is to warm up the engine and not rely on this right away, but let me play around with that chart and uh, RPM feature so you can see what they look like live actual RPM, delta RPM, and you see the RPMs going up or down, uh, revving it up. All right, let's talk about what we were seeing there uh, with the bike off here. So obviously, we have our four lines that we hooked up. This is one, two, three, four, just in line. And the adjuster screws for doing carb sync, we have one here, which does the two banks, this bank to this bank, and then there's one here, and there's one here. And the center one that does the banks is actually easier to adjust when you open the throttle slightly. You can get in there. So it's nice to uh, to also when you're doing carb sync to let it run and then go ahead and shut off, open the throttle, make a little adjustment. And that cause by turning on and off and opening and closing the throttle against the stop plate, you're also what they call snapping the throttle to the stop so that makes sure and it hits that bottoming point. That's a really good idea to uh, to do anyway and then go back and compare and make sure that everything is tweaking and that it's uh, doing what it's supposed to. Let me fire this up so you can see where it's at right now. Okay, so we can see the adjustment uh, is off and this is from just doing it on the bench. So let me see if I get a screwdriver in there 
with it running and see if we can get a difference here. going right here. Goes opposite. Like that. Let's switch to the, uh, the other side here. Okay, you can see how we're off. And you can also see our RPM dropped right there. I'll turn up just a hair. And I might, I might be able to, ooh, I can get it. Let's see what happens here. See how that screen's starting to flash too to tell you that we're getting close? Then go back here. Now before I do a lot of adjustment, I want to make sure it's with the throttle. Go back down in here. Watch what'll happen when I put the screwdriver on here. I'm just gonna push on it. And you can see that we're changing things. That's why you gotta be really careful. Boom. It'll settle. There's really lights right there. Just try the slightest. Damn green right there. But what do we have to do? Flip. That, my friends, is ridiculously cool. What do you think of that? How cool is that? That was pretty fast. Really, really fast, too. And, uh,. We can compare the snapshots from before and after. So let's take a look at these before and after graphs. And this is really one of my favorite features about the software. It's just the uh, you know the documentation piece where you can show before and after. You know whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it uh, for a customer. I mean this this clearly puts a timestamp and proof to um, how it was and and how it is when you're done. So just such a fantastic uh, part of the software that you can uh, capture that and keep it attached to that customer's file through the software uh, that you, you initially set up under their name. That's another good reason uh, for taking good notes when you do that initial setup, um, just because it, it's all right there and you can access it anytime. All right, my friends, there you have it. Uh, we're finally uh, glad to get around and getting this wrapped up. Uh, what a year it's been uh, for 2020. <laughs> Uh, creeping into 21, we're finally getting a lot of stuff done. So, special thanks uh, to PropTech for choosing How to Wrench to be one of their reviewers. Uh, we found this uh, this tool to be awesome. This is the second one uh, we have done of theirs. You saw the current tester in another video. If you haven't, I'll put a link below. Um, that one was one I was crazy excited about. Um, I've used something similar to this in the past, and the the this is by far the best high-tech if you if you want to call it uh, software based carb sync tool that I've seen by far the best and let's let me talk about the reasons number one I love the fact that 
there was all the, the note taking and stuff you could put in there. But the fact that you could switch between looking at RPM or looking at the graphs, you could actually see how the how the pulse waves were crossing over each other because that visual really gives you a good clue more than just the bar. So I really like that you had the capability to switch back and forth. The RPM reading is really nice if you're adjusting the pilot screws and you want to do th uh, the idle drop procedure, that's killer. The other thing I really liked about the software was the ability to uh, select the base carb. And and why that's important is, is there's so many people, especially do-it-yourselfers, that are sinking carbs and they're like, okay, I'm just going to get all four, you know, equal. And what you don't, well, many people don't know if you've ever seen my manual, uh, how to sink carburetors with a set of manual gauges, is that the base carburetor that is not adjustable gives you a really valuable piece of information too. And that tells you how much vacuum is is in that cylinder per se because a lot of manuals will give you a spec that will tell you what that should be should it be 28 should be 30 should be 20 i i don't know I'd look at your manual but so when your base car can't achieve that setting that says in the manual you have a problem you know whether it's carburetor whether it's mechanical you have some you have something going on um, I've seen the craziest things from bent throttle shafts to all kinds of uh, things over the years. But um, another thing that I didn't get into in this video and I'm going to do an extended video in the, in the future is also uh, how to interpret what happens when you can't sync it. So like uh, you can have valve, th this tool could tell you if your valve clearances are off, could tell you if you have low compression, could tell you if you have leakage through the valves. I mean, it does so much more. So really, this was just my introduction to by far the most common thing that people are gonna do, and that's gonna go and synchronize carburetors or throttle bodies. You can use this on fuel injected as well, uh, on perfectly good machines that just need maintenance. So that's why we thought we'd start with this video, just to show you what the maintenance uh, feature would look like. But way cool, um, just, just for transparency, I went in there and like went crazy one way, crazy the other way, jacked it all up, you know, flipped the throttle around a bunch of times, and then went back to see like how fast can I pull this back in, dialed it right back in. So, um, and I got consistent results. So like if I moved it, you know, way high where the bars were, you know, way off like this and I synced them back and I counted like the number of turns and I put them way up there again, I kept getting like the same readings. So that gave me a lot of faith and a lot of confidence uh, in this as well. But if, if you may remember, uh, this company, they're no strangers to high tech. They did a lot of super bike racing tuning. Uh, they're, I would say, world known in uh, the super bike arena and then especially uh, overseas. So bringing their products to the U.S., we're excited because it's way cool stuff. So hope you found this video useful. Uh, we got links below of how you can purchase and get your own. And then uh, stay tuned. We're going to have much more to come. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, shout out to Prop uh, Tech for uh, getting hooked up with Outer Ranch. So as always, my friends, uh, like, share, subscribe, join the channel, make it a great day, and keep wrenching.